Margate Seafront, the scene of so much joy and happiness from the early 1900s until the late 1970s. Every year, coachloads of people would arrive on the Thanet coastline from London and further afield to enjoy golden sands, amusements and an escape from day-to-day -day working life. Dreamland was at the centre of that, back when rules and regulations didn't stand in people's way of fun. Sir Roger Gale, MP for North Thanet, explains how the cheap package holidays ended all of this. With the cheap sunshine holiday, all that went. Suddenly people could get on planes, fly to the Mediterranean, lie in the sun, have cheap beer, cheap food and reliable weather. And that in the 70s and 80s undermined the whole seaside trade. Hotels and guest houses went into a downward spiral because they weren't getting enough punters. Margate High Street, of course, died because the Labour administration at the time created Westwood Cross. Following this, Dreamland was shut down and burnt down and things looked very bleak for the town. Its fortunes did begin to change, though, when in 2011 the long-awaited Turner Contemporary Centre opened, which has attracted over 2 million people to the area and contributed £41 million into the local economy through tourism since opening. Roger Gale explains more about the Turner Contemporary's effect on the local area. That did have a regentrifying effect on Margate Old Town, which had gone right downhill. There's not a shop available in the old town now. Um, Margate High Street is now filling up again with shishi little boutiques, restaurants. So it's a different kind of culture. We're turning into the lanes of Brighton again. Four years later, another huge step was made in Margate's rejuvenation. In October 2015, Dreamland reopened its gates for the first time in over a decade, and over 16,000 people visited the weekend before Christmas. For sure, Margate is back on the rise, but there is still work to be done to return it to its former glory.